Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Vietnam Innovators. I'm your host, Hal. Thank you for coming in and, and tuning in, supporting the show as always. Uh, today's guest is Phu Pham. He's the country manager of Robert Walters Vietnam. Robert Walters is one of the most uh, well-known executive, spe specializing in executive recruitment uh, in Vietnam, and they've hired probably thousands, if not tens of thousands of people uh, at this point, uh, helping to bring them to Vietnam or helping uh, Vietnamese find new kind of careers in Vietnam as well. And because of that, they have a lot of understanding and knowledge and insights about market trends related to talent recruitment. So it's a pleasure to have you on the show today, Phuc. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for making your time available. Yeah, thank you for having me yes, as well. Of course. Fook and I, we uh, actually, Robert Walters, we go way back. We've known them for a number of years. Uh, Fook, though, you have a new role at the company. Yeah. Uh, a few months ago, you became the country manager. Yeah. Um, let's talk about your career first. Yeah. You know, you talk about other people's careers all the time. <laughs> but let's talk about your career. Yes. Um, you've been with the firm for uh, a number of years yes. now. Um, how does one even get started in executive recruitment? Let's start there. And what have been some milestones and learnings along the way for you? grow your own career yeah, yeah absolutely so um so it was a long journey i've been in mm -hmm. the business for uh, a little bit of over eight years mm -hmm. i started my career with robot waters back then in 2014. Mm -hmm. um it was fairly simple for me right after graduation from the university mm -hmm. uh, by the way uh, i studied economics and actually my mm -hmm. major was around public finance okay and but immediately right after graduation i realized that there are three things number one uh, I, I like to do sales job Okay. That's the first thing. Number two is people. Okay. Number three, cervix. Okay. So it was looking for a career or jobs, basically, with these three bullet points, mm. basically. Um, so I first ended with a job, which is a business development for one international insurance company. Okay. I did it for, I think, uh, roughly two years. Okay. But I couldn't really find that my passion or, mm. you know, my career development opportunities that clear over there. Okay. And I decided to move on, right? Mm. So um, it came quite natural because mm. I knew someone who is mm -hmm. doing this job. Okay. And who uh, was that person? It was actually one of my friends in high school. Okay. So she was doing a recruiter, uh -huh. recruitment job at that point in time. And mm -hmm. obviously, we got a cup of chit chat, coffee, mm. said, hey, what, tell me a bit about your job. What mm -hmm. are you doing, et cetera. Okay. And Robot Walters as a company name came up. Mm. So I was just going mm. around on LinkedIn, connected to a guy over okay. there uh, um, on, on, on LinkedIn. Uh -huh. We started to have some sort of conversation. Um, and very soon after that, I got a job here. So when I started the job, I was the most, the most junior guy. Okay. The youngest guy in the office, oh. by the way, at that point in time. We were having around 25, 30 employees. We were three years in Vietnam as a company. So mm -hmm. really young company as well. Mm -hmm. um, but knowing nothing about recruitment. Yeah. And obviously the youngest, the most junior guys as well. Mm -hmm. And when I first came, I said, hey, I study a bit about finance. So yeah. perhaps finance recruitment could be good. Yeah. Um, but they said, uh, oh, no, we don't have any. <laughs> um, so you, you ended up doing other things like healthcare and tech yeah, and everything. We, yeah, I ended, first thing, I actually recruited, recruited for construction. Okay. So I work with civil engineer, wow. electrical engineer, mechanical engineer guys, and I know literally nothing about it. So you just had to learn super fast. Yeah. And then, yeah. Okay. So it's basically an empty paper, knowing nothing about the industry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the recruitment itself, but it was a super fun journey in a okay. way. Um, like we were basically building the team around that construction market. And mm. if you recall, mm. back then in 2015, 2017, mm -hmm. the real estate market was, was booming. really good in Vietnam. Yep. Right? Mm. So we got lots of inquiries. It was really exciting, mm. very fast growing okay. teams as well. Um, it was one of our most profitable team at that point in time. Yep. Yep. And you know, they have to, once the business is there, we mm. started to hire more people. Right. And you moved on to a different yes. role. Yeah, yeah. And I moved on to um, the other jobs, okay. basically. So, uh, yeah, over, over time, you eventually reached the, yeah. the point where you're leading the whole organization yeah. in Vietnam now. Um, we have quite a number of executives and other directors listening to today's show, but we have quite a number of Gen Z yeah. and millennials, too, who were in the same place that you were. Yeah. Uh, you know, five, uh, eight, ten years ago. What advice do you have for them that, you know, they're starting their careers, uh, they don't really know, you know, if yeah. this is it for them. Yeah. Uh, what does it take to become a country manager? Did you even <laughs> think about becoming one when yeah. you joined the firm? Yeah. Yeah. You, you thought about it like, oh, like I, I love that job. Like, what, what's it take to get there? Yeah. What, what's your kind of short little advice that you could share? Yeah. Is it 
is it a mental kind of thing you have to be prepared for? Is it uh, meeting the right people? What are some tips, perhaps? Yeah, I think the most important thing is what I found, especially with the candidates, because our mm. job is very simple. We meet people on a daily basis, mm. right? And, and, and a lot of people, I think, it's very unfortunate that they don't really sure or they don't really know what they are looking for. Mm. And therefore, even from a recruitment angle, it's so challenging mm. to find the opportunities and can help them out, right, right? right? So that's why we called our guys as a consultant, because mm. we consult people generally about their careers mm -hmm. uh, and obviously a market trend as well. Mm. My first advice could be huh. starting inside out, not outside in. Inside out, okay. Okay, so yeah. you've got to understand who you are, mm. your values, your DNA, what you are standing for, mm. what do you need, what do you want to achieve in your own career, mm. and then you find the opportunities that matching with those things. Yeah. Because that's also the typical reason why a lot of people, they are hooping around mm. because they are not really sure. Mm. And it, once you are not so sure, you started to think about that place, that place, that place. Mm. And perhaps it looks a little bit greener, mm. maybe somewhere else. Um, and once they made a move, it is not really what they are looking right. for. Right. And you know, the cycle keep going, keep going. Mm. And in the end, it doesn't help obviously in terms of the long-term career, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so it started with that with that exercise. And, and, and that's where I came up with the three bullet points mm. that I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, second is, in our economies, in, in Vietnam generally, please be patient. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if you guys might know about my industry, which is recruitment, mm -hmm. it is one of the most fascinating industry, but it's changing so fast mm -hmm. and so dramatically. Mm -hmm. In my eight years with the basis, I, I couldn't remember how many times mm -hmm. we make some changes around the basis mm -hmm. in terms of the structure, in terms of the leadership. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you don't know what you're looking for, if you don't stay firm, it's so easy for you to be shaky. And There's so many think, things changing around yes, you. Exactly. The one thing that needs to be consistent is exactly. yourself. Exactly. So, okay. Uh, and I usually uh, tell my team and, and reminded myself multiple times that, uh, mm. you know, simple, am high, dream big, believe in yourself, mm. the rest we follow. Mm. Okay. Um, and, and things at some point will be in order again, mm. right? But if you are, and, it, and, and I usually said with a career, it's, mm -hmm. it's a marathon. Yeah. It's a marathon, mm -hmm. right? It's, you might run a little bit faster than myself, let's say in the first one or two years, mm -hmm. yeah. but over the time, that mm -hmm. could be the key for success, right? So let's be resilient, stay now it down, be consistent with, what, mm -hmm. with your approach and what you want. Usually the rest we follow. Okay. Um, but in the end also, especially with our culture in Vietnam and with the young people, uh, my, my second tips would be to be very proactive. Mm -hmm. um, do not be afraid to share with your boss that hey i actually wanted such a job mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. how let how, them know what yes, you want so they exactly. can help you get there as well okay and if you remember adrian right mm -hmm. my predecessors yes. and, and it was very clear a conversation five years ago because we got you know appraiser on the quarterly basics and mm -hmm. and during during those conversations we were talking about hey folk what mm -hmm. do you want etc mm -hmm. in, in your career and it was very transparent and honest that i wanted to get your job mm -hmm. So tell me, how could I do? Yeah. How could I get there? Yeah, yeah. I know that I'm not there yet, mm -hmm. and that's why I need to work on myself, my personal mm. development, etc. Amazing. Yeah. But tell me. Yeah. And there, and they have to, you know, it's a two ways collaboration. Mm. You know, uh, the managers, the boss, will be fully aware of what you want, mm. where perhaps there is a gap. Yeah. And there, that we work on that year on year. Well, they shouldn't be you. just telling their bosses. They should be telling Robert Walter consultants <laughs> too, right? So, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you must have those conversations yeah. every single day. Yeah, you must be exactly. asking, you know, uh, these individuals who are uh, looking to get to the next step in their careers. Yeah. You know, what do they want, uh, yeah. and how how you guys can help them. And you know, that leads me to my next question, which yeah. is talking about trends in the market. Um, you guys work with both Vietnamese but mm. also foreigners. Uh, most are already here in Vietnam, yeah. but some are looking outside from outside side what are some high level trends about uh executive recruitment yeah. which is what you guys focus on that you can share today like the demand must be only increasing yeah. for instance um wh what are both individuals and, and companies thinking about uh the next level executive recruitment in vietnam just what are your quick takeaways that you could share 
Yeah, I think unfortunately there isn't that much changes comparing mm. to 10 years ago when mm. I first started my job. Still a problem yeah, finding still. people. <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, from a recruitment angle, we are mm. having a very different market with, uh, mm. for example, our neighbor Singapore, right? Mm -hmm. Or um, Hong Kong or in a mature market. Mm -hmm. It's extremely candidate driven markets. Okay. Generally speaking, it's there is a gap between supply and demand, mm -hmm. right? Usually we have jobs, but we are struggling to find the qualified mm. candidates for those jobs. Okay. And typically, the higher it goes in terms of the job levels, the less qualified the mm. candidates can be for the job. Oh. Right? So that's, it doesn't change okay. over the times. Mm. And at, at the same time, from the company, from the employer perspective, it's still fairly traditional mm. because it's executive, right? It's a senior, it's very important position mm -hmm. within the organization. Yep. So companies generally, they are not that adventurous in terms of their hiring. Mm. So they choose a very conservative and safe, you know, approach mm. in a way which is usually um, hiring someone coming from the same industry, doing that job before, someone mm. who can come in and perform or do the job immediately. Mm. And therefore, it is even more challenging for companies to find people in their own sectors. Okay. Um, because ultimately, it's still very immature. Mm -hmm. So that's um, obviously the biggest challenge, um, which is uh, leading to uh, one of uh, one, one of the biggest opportunities for Vietnamese employees in Vietnam for the time being, um, that those are there. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, everyone is talking about localization in terms of the leadership team, especially for the MNCs mm -hmm. in Vietnam. And as a Vietnamese, we have so much opportunities mm -hmm. to be and to lead that organization mm -hmm. in a very near future. So, a uh, question for you about localization and yeah. hiring uh, candidates locally for these super senior roles. You know, most of them. This is just my from my experience. Yeah. I'm not saying it's it's true or not necessarily, but uh, if you compare a population of Vietnam, yeah. 100, 100 million less than that, and you have markets like China and India yeah. that are billions of people, and those markets have no problems hiring local staff because there's yeah. a lot of them, super qualified as well to fill those roles. Um, you look at the Fortune 500 companies. Yeah. I'm sure if you looked at a company like India or a country like India, uh, of those Fortune 500 companies probably 90, 95% yeah. are filled by local True. hires because there's enough people yeah. and the education system is producing enough yeah. people uh, to support those roles. In Vietnam, do you see similar numbers? Probably not, right? I, I don't see those numbers. Yeah. I think you have quite a few uh, Indian uh, yeah. executives, for instance, coming to Vietnam yeah. because uh, they have that experience. They have that company experience. But what does Vietnam need to do yeah. to have enough uh, local super senior, you know, time is one thing. Yeah. Um, what did, what does Vietnam need to do to fill that ta talent pipeline? I think the, the most important thing is the education, mm -hmm. right? It's, there is a, a big gap between what we are at, what we are educating people or the university, et cetera, et cetera, to mm -hmm. provide talents for the markets versus the demand of the market itself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, Unfortunately, we haven't seen that much changes over the times, mm -hmm. um, and that's why, as you as as you guys might observe, we therefore came up with that overseas Vietnamese to come back, come which home is for come good home program. for good, yeah, yeah. because mm -hmm. we see that gap mm -hmm. and we know that it's going to take time, obviously, as a country to get there. Mm -hmm. But in the end, we can have a Vietnamese somewhere else mm -hmm. can do that job as you know a proper expat, mm -hmm. Indian, Chinese, or you know Western guys doing that job. Yep. The Vietnamese can do that job as well. But at least that's a short or medium approach. Mm -hmm. But in the long term, I think it's, it's critical to have that approach right with the educational system. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, which leads me to my next question about the prospects of developing its yeah. own leadership. From what I see, a lot of the biggest Vietnamese companies, for instance, they have that leadership. But it's it's usually driven internally. Yeah, you know, they people start at a young age, kind of like you know, yeah. you started as a youngster at Robert Walters, and you were able to build your career, make it known that you wanted to progress within the organization. I look at some really large institutions like Masson or Vin Group or FPT, yeah. and um, a lot of the senior leadership have been there for decades. Yeah. Is that culture of staying at companies that long uh, to, to, in order to build that leadership from, in, from inside, is that, is that still a thing? Can, can employers like an FPT expect that the youngsters coming today will stay for, for decades like their past leadership have? Is that, is that something you think is, is going to happen? 
or will, will be a challenge because Gen yeah. Z like to hop, right? They don't yeah. know what they like to do. Yeah, what, it, could what be, yeah. it could be a challenge, mm. certainly. Uh, it's especially with a new generation. We, we're talking about Gen Z for the time being. It's typically, I look at a bit of our report just earlier coming here. Mm -hmm. It's 1.5 years than mm -hmm. a, in average for digital. Okay, 1.5 years, yeah. Yeah, for example. Mm. I think it's um, it's really difficult for you, number one, to build the expertise, number two, to start to contribute to companies and mm. therefore to see the results of what you have already done mm. before, right? Um, and second, it's, it's, it's really difficult for the company itself to plan the career for their employees or successor planning accordingly with that approach. Mm. Um, because yeah, unfortunately, that's a that's a reality that we have to face with mm -hmm. and we have to live with, which is really short, 1.5 to 2 years across a lot of industries. Okay. Um, in some, it can be a little bit more drastic. Uh, in some, it's okay. Um, but that's my wish, really, uh -huh. uh, to see. Um, but ultimately, mm -hmm. if everything started from the top, uh, executive, knowing that this is the, the, the 10 years plan to develop that successor planning mm -hmm. or the talents within the company. I think that could be very different um, because it's, it's going back to the, you know, the learning and development for people mm -hmm. inside. We um, we have recently launched uh, a survey, very comprehensive survey, which is uh, called Not So Great Resignation. And in that survey, we basically uh, surveyed 3,700 people across Southeast Asia, obviously including Vietnam as well. Mm -hmm. And 51% of the employers, they think that one of the best way for retention is actually around training and developing people, mm. right? So they know, they are aware that they need to go on that to retain their people. Mm. Uh, but again, that's the other side of the equation, which is the candidates in the end, they need to look at the same things as well with their employers. Let's take a step back and, yeah. uh, and look at the Robert Walters business a little bit yeah. because a lot of these factors are not necessarily in your control. I think yeah. you can exactly you can do surveys and talk to clients and share those insights to them so they can take their own action. Right? <laughs> yeah. You're not consultants for how they do their L and D. Yeah. It's it's uh, you guys are helping to recruit uh, people from outside, bringing new energy. Yeah. Um, you mentioned a couple programs. Uh, you're doing like the Come Home for Good program. Yeah. We've talked about it at length on Viet Cetera before too. Yeah. So I think a lot of our listeners may be familiar with it. But for those that aren't, um, could you please highlight some of the programs you're doing like that one that mm -hmm. you're doing to help that short term, short to medium term talent yeah. gap. What are you guys yeah. doing? Yeah. yeah, we have two. Uh, we have two very popular white papers. Okay. Uh, the first one, which is overseas Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea was started in uh, 2016. It was mm -hmm. very simple. Like we got the same challenge with our clients in terms of uh, you know filling the senior executive mm -hmm. position. Yeah. Um, and therefore, you know, we started to look for alternatives and, and and options as well by that time. And and it was very. We have, I think, a good. 60 or 70 percent of our employees actually returned to Vietnamese. Mm. So they used to leave, they work overseas. And Robert Walters yeah, itself. Okay. And they came back and to work for us now. So we started to look for those people. That's how we are hire people mm -hmm. as well in, in for our companies. So can we do the same? And we never actually talk about it that much mm. before. We were mainly look for people within the country. So we started to think about that, and obviously there's a big demand from our clients as well. At that point in time, by meeting clients, we know that there are some VQ mm. and uh, they came back and they are holding a very high position in uh, different companies as well. We said, maybe this can be a good solution for our clients and for ourselves as well, right? Mm. So we started to launch that in 2016. We have one dedicated person running that campaign for us in the past few years. In that six years, we've been reaching out to over 1,500 people living okay. and working overseas, mm -hmm. overseas Vietnamese and try to bring them back home. Mm. Uh, we have already placed hundreds of people since then, and it was very successful, right? Mm. Second white paper that we go as a hiding base on potential. Okay. So just to go back to my previous point, which mm. is companies are really conservative. Uh -huh. yeah. So they look for people who can do the job immediately. Mm. So we run a very comprehensive research around that and see, you know, what is a pros and cons of that approach, mm. right? Um, and therefore we came up with that. So. So just to give you a fairly example, instead of, instead of hiring a proper CEO for the company, mm. right? Perhaps looking for CEO minus one mm. or minus two somewhere mm. else. Mm. Number one, um, it can be basically improving the candidate pool. So you have more options to choose uh, mm -hmm. from the available markets. Second is generally it's improving a lot that engagement, mm -hmm. you know, between the employees and employers. Yeah. And, and generally retention in the end. 
Mm -hmm. So it's actually a very good long, mid and long term investment for the company itself. Of course, case by case, it's not always be the case, but we have seen a lot of examples that it has been working very well with that approach. For companies considering that approach, uh, when you say, you know, like a CEO that's not quite there yet, but yeah. can be on that path. Uh, what kind of timeline do you guys see? Like a lot of companies are considering that, yeah. but how can you manage their expectations? Like, do they have to wait a couple years? What do they do within those couple years to prepare that candidate? Maybe yeah. you can share about that. Yes, yeah, so actually, to, to map it out, the industry itself is actually quite quick mm -hmm. uh, because we are functionally specialized and we are specialist consultants. So usually the consultants, they know areas fairly well. Mm. So if you look for CEO, for example, in pharmaceutical industry, right? Mm -hmm. We can easily come up with 10, 15 names in less than a week. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and therefore we know exactly who can be good for that job, who might not be good for that job. And mm -hmm. especially in our job, timing is also very critical, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might not be the right timing to move or to change the job as well. So usually it came with a bit of the data mm -hmm. and, uh, and what we have already done uh, in terms of market mapping as well. Okay. And, and, and therefore the consultation will be a lot more you know, easier to mm -hmm. the clients mm -hmm. uh, to follow. Okay. Yeah. Fook, you mentioned uh, the overseas Vietnamese program. Yeah. People that have cultural understanding are, are essential. Uh, at the end of the day, though, yeah. I, I think the foreign talent pool that want to come to Vietnam and understand Vietnam is also critical yeah. to the development of Vietnam's yeah. uh, eco economy. Um, I'd like to just grab some highlights about what groups of people are really interested in Vietnam. So, for instance, we mentioned about, uh, you know, there's a lot of Indian executives yeah. that come here, uh, particularly in FMCG and yeah. technology. Uh, what countries uh, or ethnicities of people, I guess you could say, have huge interest in coming here? Yeah. Uh, would you would you be able to share? It's, and why as yeah, well, if yeah, possible? Of course, um, we have a lot of interest from Southeast Asia as a region generally. Okay. And perhaps, I think, and then Australia, uh, US and UK. Mm. That's, that's basically a bit of the orders. Um, but generally speaking, I think perhaps because of a geographic uh, mm. point of view uh, that is just nearby. Um, Vietnam is uh, really a hotspot in, in the region as well in terms mm. of the growing economies, uh, fast moving things. Uh, things can happen very quickly. And more importantly, at the end of the day, people can see it on the ground, I think, mm. which is really something that they won't be able to have if you are holding a very high position in the regional office, for example. Um, so we have a lot of interest from the region itself, right? Mm -hmm. um, Singapore is one of the biggest places where okay. we can get talents. Um, like, uh, Singaporeans or yeah. people just living in Singaporean, Singapore? And actually, uh, if you uh, pay, mm -hmm. atten pay attention to Singapore, Singapore as a country is actually one of our biggest FDI investor yep, right. in Vietnam. Right. So there are a lot of Singaporean business in Vietnam. Mm. Um, but at the same time, with what's going on globally with you know the war of Russia and Ukraine, obviously after COVID, and now zero COVID policy in China, mm -hmm. uh, we see a lot of companies are moving their business from China to Vietnam mm -hmm. and see in general, Southeast Asia in general. Mm -hmm. um, but Vietnam is having a lot of advantage in terms of a potential destination for those guys. Um, so we see executive mm -hmm. from the, these uh, countries as well. Okay. Um, Indian is a lot, obviously, because of um, a huge population, very, very mobile highly educated, mm -hmm. uh, highly adaptable as well. Mm. And usually they are spreading everywhere in mm -hmm. the region as well. So they are quite flexible around that. Mm. So Indian a lot and also uh, generally Western, and that, as I mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. European, UK, um, and, uh, and and a bit of Australia as well. Okay. And, and you guys leverage the the Robert Walters regional yeah. team. Like you mentioned for the OVE, yeah. for instance, you have 1,500 candidates that yeah. you've profiled. Now multiply that by the hundreds of candidates you have across the region, yeah. and you've got a, pro, a, a picture, a snapshot of yeah. who's looking yeah. at the, uh, the, the executive talent pool in a greater Southeast Asia, yeah. right? Um, so my next question would be um, in relation to that bigger talent pool, are the companies satisfied with that talent pool? That, I guess mm -hmm. that's my question. Um, you mentioned Vietnam is very ta uh, candidate driven, not company driven. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can explain, you know, those gaps and how that talent pool reflects that that feeling. That's yeah. Important. So uh, first of all, the gap. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, that's a seriously impacting everyone now. Um, so if I can think of um, four body parts, basically, mm -hmm. um, the first thing is we talk a lot about tech, right? As a, as an industry, technologies. Uh, even though that the education is 
getting way better than where it was before, mm-hmm. especially with the technologies. Uh, mm-hmm. We have a very good university such as FPT, right, educating very good people. Um, at the same time, we have a very young population as well, mm-hmm. and those generally are very fast learner, highly adaptable, and it's getting a lot better. Uh, but at the same time, we have a, a, a huge demand coming to Vietnam mm. in terms of technology's demand. Right? For example, companies are setting up their tech hub. They are now even 100% remote job as well. Mm. Right? So you can be based in Vietnam, you can go for the U- US companies right, somewhere right. else, for example. Right? So the, the world is actually flat. Mm. Right? Um, but what we found is on two things. Number one is... Um, is a is a is a communication. It's a soft skill. By that I mean with English, basically, right? Mm. Vietnamese tech generally very good at technical expertise. Uh, they are usually very good at that. Mm-hmm. Very hardworking. Yeah. Um, but obviously there's a big gap in terms mm-hmm. of English speaking, right? Mm-hmm. Because as I mentioned before, companies are MNC, are international, so the ability to work and to interact with people globally are there, mm-hmm. and you can't just communicate by writing all the time, yeah. right? So that's the biggest missing. Um, second is from a technical standpoint, it's constantly changing. So the technical terms are new and people have to catch up as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's fast more than ever. So obviously there's a gap there, right? Once you started to identify that, that's the, let's say the demand of the market. It's going to take a little bit of time for you to adapt mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. right there. So that's with tech. Second, with a bit with, with the digital, right? Uh, it's only started right after COVID, right? So 2020, and there is a big change in terms of consumer behavior, especially in Vietnam. Right? Did, did you guys have to hire a lot of digital consultants yes. after that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, it's actually one of the uh, one of the fastest growing uh, teams in our business. Okay. Um, but again, I think going back to digital. But before 2020, right? As I as perhaps uh, you know that uh, most companies mm-hmm. they are really traditionally mm-hmm. uh, doing the business here in Vietnam. The majority is a good. 70, 80 percent mm-hmm. are actually still offline sales, right? Mm-hmm. But after that, we are now talking about a big shift between online, uh, sorry, offline to online sales, and therefore there's a huge need for you know digital marketing, mm-hmm. growth, business development in mm-hmm. those sectors, mm-hmm. and we just couldn't have the talents. Mm-hmm. That's the second thing. Mm-hmm. The third thing is around manufacturing. Is uh, everyone is talking about manufacturing, and it's it's really excited to see those things. high tech though now. Yeah. So everyone is moving, obviously after COVID, all the big MNCs, they are now looking at diversifying their mm-hmm. supply chain solution, right? Mm-hmm. So they are not going to put their manufacturing in one place anymore. They are going to diversify it. Mm-hmm. And again, Vietnam is one of a very attractive destination for those guys mm-hmm. for many reasons, right? Um, with the reason ongoing, zero COVID in China, of, of course, is it is getting a lot of benefits for our countries. So certainly, just in less than, let's say from 2021, just right after COVID, there are a lot of big companies, they're moving their factories here, or they are expanding the, the business here. Mm. And therefore there's a bigger need in terms of, you know, hiring people. They, they want to split up all their factories, but yes. have an expert at each one. That's, yes, that's, exactly. a, that's difficult to yeah. manage from an HR point of view. And, yeah. and from a talent standpoint, mm. it's really challenging because if you look at the manufacturing facility, right, typically if you are working in Dong Nai, mm. likely the family will be based in Dong Nai, right? right? right. So the kids will be there, better at education, etc. But you need to build infrastructure around that. Yes. So in, schools and, and hospitals yes. and roads and yeah. everything. Okay. And, and, and they are not that mobile anyway. Mm. Right? So if, if there's another job, let's say based in uh, Long An, for example, mm-hmm. or in Hanoi, for example, the mm. same job, it's, it's a lot more difficult. Mm-hmm. So those work folks are not that mobile as well, mm-hmm. meaning they are really focusing in that areas mm-hmm. and therefore it's, it's making things a lot more difficult mm-hmm. to attract people mm-hmm. uh, or if you are based in Ho Chi Minh City we mm-hmm. get a job let's say based in Amata or mm-hmm. in VC for example yeah. it's a long travel mm-hmm. on the daily basis so yeah. people yeah. take those things into account as well mm-hmm. okay yeah? very interesting Fook, um, we're nearing the end of our podcast yeah. here and I always like to ask a couple questions at the end first is for for Robert Walters itself yeah are you guys hiring? Yeah. And, and, and what kind of roles are you hiring for? You yeah. mentioned, you know, you have 
consultants, for instance, yeah. what, what else are you guys hiring for? Yeah, so we are expanding. Uh, mm -hmm. This year, 2021, we have been growing quite aggressively. Mm -hmm. And I actually have decided uh, at least to have mm -hmm. a, a, an extra floor mm -hmm. at the current building because we wanted to put a lot of focus in Vietnam as a market. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally speaking, we are hiring consultants across all the functions as well. Mm -hmm. We are a big fan of industry professionals. Okay. Um, so we hire finance people doing a recruitment oh, in finance. Okay. So, so they, they have never thought about doing recruitment yes. necessarily, don't have the experience, yes. but... Okay. Yeah. Why is that? Is it because they have the network, the understanding? Is it a bit of both, perhaps? Um, yeah, the key would be for the consultant to understand, mm. to, to speak the same languages mm. with the candidate and clients, mm. right? If they are coming from finance, you okay. could understand how is the finance candidate Ooh. might be working on the day-to-day -day basics, mm -hmm. how are they mm. behaving, what they are looking for, yeah. <clears throat> and they will be in a better position to consult not only the candidates, but also about the clients as well. Mm. So, uh, but again, this is a, a bit of a, a long-term approach mm. from our end. Okay. And last question, yeah. you know, someone like you, you've, you've, you touch on a daily basis, so many different industries and you get a, a really good picture of what's going on yeah. and, and you probably learn a lot too, but perhaps there's things that you don't know that you'd like to learn more about, yeah. or you don't know enough perhaps, yeah. um, you know, who else would you like to see on this show? It doesn't have to be a person, perhaps an industry or a company that would be useful for you yeah. and the Robert Walters team to do your yeah. job yeah. just a little bit better. Yeah. I would love to see some as I and Z as young people in the show okay. share, to share a little bit about their perspective, right? Okay. Because for, for multiple reasons, number one, I'm hiring Zen Z for my mm. team, my people. As mm -hmm. employers, we are hiring mm. people, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really important to understand what is there mm. and what they are looking for. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, I think when, when we look at the middle levels, especially from the workforce perspective, mm. we started to see more and more Zen Z. You know, being at the managers levels at those multinational really? companies, okay. we started to see more. Wow. By the way, okay. um, so it's, it would be very nice to understand uh -huh. more uh, on 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 that aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, not only for our job, but also you know to get a better understanding because this is anyway the majority of our population now. Mm. Fascinating. Okay. Right? Well, hopefully your wish will come true. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much today for your insights and sharing, Fook. It's been such a pleasure and, you know, best of luck to the Robert Walters team. I hope you guys have enough candidates <laughs> for your clients. Um, it's always a challenge, but I'm sure maybe through the show, yeah. uh, a few of them will be in contact. So yeah. thank you so much for joining and uh, wish you guys the best and hope to have you on the show very soon. Yeah. Again. Thank you. Hal. Yeah. With a comprehensive healthcare ecosystem, GeoHealth integrates technology to optimize the examination experience for their customers. The GeoSmart Clinic provides a multi-specialty clinic experience with a team of elite doctors and cutting-edge technology. And with their recent Series B investment of up to 20 million US dollars, GeoHealth is coming closer to expanding their smart clinic system nationwide.